copy it down, Eagle. I have a dream. We shall never surrender. Tear down this wall. This is the top defining moments of the decade by History City. The 1940s was a decade marked by significant global events, particularly due to World War II, which dominated the first half of the decade. This one was harder to do compared to previous decades. The world was in a world war. We had to make this a list where the 10 we chose to represent larger events in context. This decade would set up the world order for the rest of the 20th century. We had to leave out important events of the decade, like the Berlin Airlift. We would have loved to talk of the golden age of Hollywood, the birth of rock and roll, the many art movements, and so much more. But this decade is defined by tyrants, death, and evil walking the earth. Since this one was difficult, we decided to focus on singular events or one aspect of something instead of overall events. We won't be listing World War II by itself, the Holocaust, or any single person. I'm Jack Murphy. What do you think of our list? Let us know in the comments below. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Every time you do, a Nazi gets punched in the face. Punch in the face! So hit the button and ask your friends to hit it too. Number 10. Number 10. First computer built, 1945. It's tough for us to imagine a world without computers. Every single aspect of our lives has been impacted by the computer. Have you ever thought about scanning an item at the store and paying for it all in under a minute? Probably not, right? It's just how we exist today. Computers have transformed industries, automated tasks, boosted productivity in fields ranging from manufacturing to finance. They've also revolutionized research and innovation, accelerating scientific discoveries and technological advancements. The computer's influence extends to education, healthcare, entertainment, and even the way we manage our daily lives. From smartphones to supercomputers, these machines have become integral to our society, shaping the way we work, communicate and interact with the world, and their impact continues to evolve and expand with each passing day. We ask you this though, what would happen if the electrical grid went down? You are suddenly disconnected from your money, loved ones, and resources you're used to. That thought should scare everybody. Number nine. Number 9. Independence of India and Pakistan The independence of India and Pakistan in 1947 marked a historic and pivotal moment in the history of South Asia and the world. After nearly two centuries of British colonial rule, India gained its long-awaited freedom on August 15th, and Pakistan emerged as a separate nation the following day on August 14th. This partition was a complex and tumultuous process, resulting in one of the largest mass migrations in human history, as millions of people crossed borders to either India or Pakistan, often amid violence and upheaval. Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolent civil disobedience movement and the leadership of figures like Jawaharlal Nehru and Muhammad Ali Jinnah played instrumental rules in the struggle for independence. The partition, however, also led to communal violence, particularly in Punjab and Bengal, which left scars on both nations' collective memories. Number 8 D-Day on June 6, the Allied forces showed up to the beaches in the northern French coastal state of Normandy. The moment an Allied troop set foot on the beach, it would mark the beginning of the end to Nazi Germany. The Allies had one goal, establish a beachhead so more men and supplies could make their way inland. Although there were some strategic gaps in the planning, the well-trained and equipped troops showed up and fought their way inland inch by inch. Today, people from all over Europe acknowledge D-Day as the beginning of the liberation movement for the continent. Many men who stepped foot on the beach in the first wave would not return home. The United States makes no claims to land outside of the continental United States. We stake to claim to Alaska and Hawaii, not to mention territories like Puerto Rico and all the other islands. But the countries of France, Belgium, and England have promised that the cemeteries in which these men are buried, well, that land now belongs to them. Number seven. Attack on Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked 
by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a pivotal moment that had a profound impact on the course of history, particularly with regard to World War II and the larger geopolitical landscape of the 20th century. Prior to the attack, the United States had been officially neutral in World War II, although it had been aiding the Allied powers through the land lease program. The attack on Pearl Harbor galvanized American public opinion and led directly to the U.S. declaring war on Japan the following day, thereby joining World War II as a combatant. Three days after the attack, Germany and Italy, allies of Japan, declared war on the United States, leading the U.S. to reciprocate. This brought the full military and industrial might of the United States into the war, significantly tipping the scales in favor of the Allies. Number 6 Formation of Israel, 1948. The formation of Israel holds profound significance in modern history as it represents the realization of the Zionist dream for a Jewish homeland and the end of centuries of Jewish displacement. It also embodies the post-World War II recognition of the need for a safe refuge for Jewish survivors of the Holocaust and other persecuted Jewish communities. Additionally, Israel's establishment triggered major geopolitical shifts in the Middle East, reshaping the regional balance of power and igniting ongoing conflicts and peace processes. The nation's existence continues to evoke strong emotions and international attention, making it a pivotal factor in global diplomacy, security, and discussions on self-determination, identity, and the dynamics of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Number five. Number five. Hitler commits suicide, 1945. It's normally strange to celebrate another human's death, but let's face it, Hitler was a sycophant. And our only regret here is the old Fuhrer probably didn't feel any pain when the bullet went through his stupid sauerkraut-eating face. Number four. The New World Order, NATO, United Nations, the Marshall Plan. There were so many to choose from for the 40s, we thought we would combine these. Although I normally hate the term New World Order, it makes me think of a dystopian future where countries have no sovereignty. It's the best way to sum up all these changes in the world. The post-World War II era marked the emergence of a New World Order characterized by significant geopolitical changes. At the center of this transformation was the establishment of the United Nations in 1945, designed to foster international cooperation and prevent future conflicts through diplomacy and collective security. The war left Europe in ruins and shifted the balance of global power from colonial empires to the United States and the Soviet Union, leading to the Cold War and the division of the world into two opposing blocs. The Bretton Woods Conference in 1944 also laid the groundwork for a new international economic system with the creation of institutions like the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank. Number three. Chinese Communist Revolution, culminating in 1949 with the establishment of the People's Republic of China under the leadership Mao Zedong, the Chinese Communist Revolution had a profound impact on the trajectory of Chinese history and global geopolitics. This revolution ended decades of civil unrest and warlord rule, uniting mainland China under a single government for the first time in half a century. However, it also led to the marginalization or elimination of political dissidents, landowners, and others deemed class enemies, and laid the groundwork for radical social and economical experiments like the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, which had devastating social and human costs. Internationally, the emergence of communist China altered the balance of power during the Cold War, eventually leading to a Sino-Soviet split that fractured the global communist movement, which is playing out today in the Russia Ukraine war. Это как раз сейчас перемены, которые не было в течение ста лет. Там где вместе двигаем эти перемены. Перекиньте, пожалуйста, дорогие, дорогой друг. The United States' unwavering support for Ukraine has driven Russia and China into an even better relationship. Russia's Vladimir Putin rolling out the red carpet for his, quote, dear friend, Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Number two. Nuremberg Trials. In 
Nuremberg, once the cradle of German fascism. Nuremberg, where the Nazis ran rampant. Nuremberg, from which the demented Hitler, Elias Corporal Schuppelgruber, hurled his threat to the world. Nuremberg now lies in ruins and ashes. It is symbolized by this disabled German in the a philosophical lesson of history, a lesson which future aggressors would do well to remember. The most notable of these was the first trial, which indicted 24 leading figures from Nazi Germany, including Hermann Goring, Rudolf Hess, and Wilhelm Keitel. Twelve were sentenced to death, three were acquitted, and the rest received various sentences ranging from imprisonment to death. These trials had far-reaching implications and set important precedents in international law. The Nuremberg trials were instrumental in establishing the principles that underlie the laws of war and armed conflict, laying the groundwork for definitions of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. The Nuremberg Code established ethical guidelines for medical experiments on human subjects, setting a standard for bioethics. Perhaps more significantly, the trials underscored the principle that individuals, and particularly government officials, are accountable for their actions, even in times of war. By providing a legal framework for prosecuting atrocities committed under the guise of state authority, the Nuremberg trials played a key role in the evolution of international human rights law. There is an ongoing debate today about the legitimacy of the trials, some even calling the trials a kangaroo court. Although there is fair criticism as to some of the procedures and sentences, the Nazis that stood trial still had rights, the ability to defend themselves, and were open to the public. These rights were not afforded to their victims. Number one. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. When the Enola Gay, piloted by Colonel Paul Tibbetts, dropped that first bomb on Hiroshima, the Earth's axis shifted into the nuclear age. First in a test in the United States New Mexico desert, then 5,000 miles away at Hiroshima, and then again at Nagasaki, came the world-shaking explosions of the atomic bomb. Latest reports from the Japanese say that 126,000 died as the result of the damage done by the single bomb that blasted the city. With the help of gauze masks, a few citizens seemed able to exist among the wastelands. Although the end of Japan's aggression was in sight before atomic bombing, it was this terrific force that finally signed her death warrant. You can even say that when the plane took off, the world was one way, and when they landed, it was another. The bombings inaugurated the nuclear age, fundamentally changing the calculus of international conflict. The new reality of mutually assured destruction ushered in by the existence of nuclear weapons transformed cold world dynamics and led to a precarious balance of power between the United States and the Soviet Union. Both superpowers engaged in a nuclear arms race, stockpiling an ever-increasing number of nuclear warheads and developing more advanced delivery systems, which in turn led to a host of international crises and near misses, including the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. J. Robert Oppenheimer, often referred to as the father of the atomic bomb, had complex feelings about the development and deployment of nuclear weapons. After the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Oppenheimer experienced a range of emotions, including a sense of accomplishment for ending the war and profound ethical and moral concerns about the destruction that the bombs had wrought. Although he wasn't necessarily the lone creator or the one who came up with the concept of the bomb, being the lab leader came with a sense of responsibility of being the face of this. 